Okay, today a discussion around a post that I put up over on gplama.com this week entitled Shimano based crankset power meters, not as accurate as you may think. So today I'll go through the summary of that. I highly recommend you jump over to gplama.com and have a read of that. There is full detail over there. I'm just gonna give a summary today of that and a few discussion points that have popped up over the last few days. I chose to do this one as a report slash blog post over on gplama.com because it can then be translated very easily for different languages and it takes some time to go through the data rather than just flipping them up on the screen. But I'll give you an overview today, so hopefully you can get across it enough, but I highly recommend jumping over to gplama.com for all the full details. Over the last 12 months, I have tested, collected, retested, re-reviewed, and revisited all of these multiple times, and to date, this is the most comprehensive Shimano crank-based power meter comparison tests that I've seen performed. This has involved testing 11 different Shimano-based dual-sided power meters from seven different companies. In short, the data I collected indicates the Shimano crankset, in particular the R8000 and R9000 model cranks, when used as power meters with strain gauges placed on the external surface, in particular the right-hand side, does not meet accuracy ranges as specified by the manufacturers. The accuracy issues that I've found in all of these cranks is most evident in steady state ERG efforts, which is commonly used for indoor training. This issue has also been observed in sim mode, simulation mode indoors, and also to some extent outdoors on steady state hill climbs, which is very similar to that of ERG mode indoors. Isolating this issue down to specifically this type of Shimano crank and further down to the right hand side has taken hundreds of hours involving multiple secondary and tertiary sources of power, all which had to be tested and verified themselves so I was confident in that data, as well as isolating as many variables as possible here too, such as drivetrain losses, temperature drift, data collection errors and yes, even myself, I've been removed from this picture and we've got the same data from other riders. The very brief conclusion of my results is that the right side power readings from these Shimano based cranks consistently read lower than the recorded power from the secondary right power source, and also the total power source was lower by the same amount than the tertiary power source, which was typically the Tax Neo, which is usually within a few watts. On the topic of verification, well, the majority of companies whose power meters are in this report have acknowledged the engineering issues that have been introduced with the new Shimano crankset design, again, specifically the right-hand side. Mechanical engineer Keith Wakeham, also power meter inventor, yes, that's his name there on the patent for this very design with four eyes, has published a 30 minute video on this specific topic showing the in-depth inherent problems with his crank design and the strain gauge placement. Okay, now onto some discussion points on this. Uh, and I understand as a result of this report and this video, it may offside some manufacturers, the owners of power meters and maybe resellers of these, but look, this is not my intent at all. It's the inverse, effectively. Uh, all of this data in the report has been forwarded over to these companies over the last few months. I just want them to make better products. If I can be part of that solution, great. What I'm looking for as a cyclist is reliable, accurate power measurement across all use cases. My next dot point being that it's not a technology issue as such. The strain gauges used by these companies on the left-hand side are fine, no problems at all. And when they're used on non-Shimano cranks, they're also fine, in my experience. My testing, same testing protocol, of the Four Eyes FSA SLK dual-sided crank reported really good levels of accuracy in the exact same test. So for me, it comes down to the base unit that's used. My analogy will be building a house. If you build a house on dirt, that's not gonna be a good experience. You built the same house on concrete, a solid base and a solid foundation, it's a better house. The most common statement or question from this report has been, does this really matter? Who cares? Well, I've got two responses to that. First of all, when the work being done isn't the same as the work being measured, there's a problem. And there are a number of cases you can come up with for that. For example, if your threshold is at 250 watts and the effort you're doing is only being measured at 235, that's a problem. There's a disconnect between effort and measurement. Power meters have one job, one job, that is to correctly measure the effort. If that's not being done, there's a problem. And my second response to does it really matter is, well, if you don't care about it for your training, that's no problems at all, that's fine. But that doesn't give a free pass to these companies to sell these devices with stated levels of accuracy that's not the case for all use cases. Another common question on the report is why hasn't anybody else reported this? And this is addressed in the report itself. But for obvious reasons, these companies aren't gonna report this issue themselves. They'll stand behind their product and their claimed levels of accuracy, and you won't see this within paid editorial reviews. However, it has crept into a few of those. They just haven't continued down the path to find out exactly what's going on. I've already discussed this in my Watt Team G3 Jewel video in depth and with confirmation from their engineers of what's going on with the right-hand side. Previously on Lost. So your force of your pedal stroke really opens up. 
I think what's happening here with the lower power readings at that 350, at that 450 range, and during those strength efforts up the hill, that the compression of that strain gauge there was a little different and not what I was expecting up to here. Probably the more of the forces going down the pedal stroke rather than, or down the crank arm, rather than compressing that just there. So again, it was a big long email. I explained all the degrees and the angles and things like that, but that was my theory about why this unit was reading low in that scenario. Let's see what they had to say. So after summarizing all that in an email, which took quite a while and quite a few paragraphs and a bit of diagram work, and putting all the data files over to the Watt team guys, I waited a few days and the email came back. Let me first start saying kudos on the observation. After ruling out zero offset slash temperature issues, we figured it may be sensor related. They go on with the paragraph of explaining to me that pretty much what I've said, these units aren't really designed as power meters from the ground up. It's a third party add on to something that's never meant to be a power meter and there's gonna be slight issues here and there. This is something we're aware of. Actually, it's pretty awesome to see you go through such depths with your review as a bunch of bike and tech geeks, it was fun seeing you figure this out. I've also identified this with the Shimano R9100P review and also in my Stages Gen 3 left right review and I've received a number of messages from people saying that they've got the same data trend where it's either overall power is lower or specifically the right side is lower on their unit. As mentioned in the intro, I have not seen this many cranks put through the same similar test protocol. So why haven't we seen it? Well, it just simply hasn't been tested to this level across a broad range of products. Now, I'm not claiming my testing protocol or methods are perfect. However, they are fully documented in my report and they haven't been disputed to date. What I can claim is there is a very concerning trend that needs to be isolated and addressed. And I've spent many, many hours, days, weeks, and sleepless nights trying to disprove my own data. I am my biggest critic. I am my worst enemy. The data is the data. You remove me from the picture, there's still a problem. And as such, removing me from the picture means this isn't an opinion piece. This isn't what I think, it's what I'm seeing, what I'm observing, and I'm what I'm trying to disprove. I can't disprove it. It keeps coming up over and over again. Right down, pinpoint, isolated, back to these cranks. Also backed up by an engineer. In fact, this week when the 11th crank set arrived, I was so confident I was gonna see this data, I really didn't wanna test the thing. But to my surprise, I installed this unit, did the testing, following the same protocol, and it was the worst I had seen. Exactly the same problem. So on to more positive things and trying to turn the ship around a little bit. Can this be solved? Well, according to Keith Wakeham, no. Not with the current Shimano crank sets without a lot of work and a lot more computation done on the meters themselves. It's not being done at the moment and may not be able to be done with this model crank set. Another solution would be for these third party power meter companies to make their own crank sets or just steer away from these things in their current state. Shimano have handed these companies these kind of cranks and said, do your best, but even we can't figure it out according to the data that I have. I really hope the next revision of these cranks will be first designed around being a power meter rather than a crank. And then from there, they can get rid of all the inherent issues with this, make an accurate power meter, and then hand them off to third parties to make a better product. And the final solution, which is pretty dire, would be for these companies to list the true accuracy claims of their power meter across all use cases. However, from a marketing perspective, that's not ideal. And we'll have people handing their cash elsewhere for all the other power meters that don't suffer this problem. So from here, jump over to gplama.com, read the article, give your feedback. I'll continue what I can do to be part of the solution. But for now, we've just identified the problem.